Coming to you live from the Business Radio X studio, it's Franchise Marketing Radio. Brought to you by IDS, an award-winning digital marketing agency that delivers integrated marketing solutions for franchisers, franchisees, and franchise development teams. Learn why over 75 brands depend on IDS's team of dedicated marketers and client service professionals to deliver a strong ROI on their marketing investment. Go to idsfranchisemarketing.com for a complimentary digital audit and consultation. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Franchise Marketing Radio. I'm Rob Ganley, and I'm your host today. And I've got a great guest with us and something that's a topic and an industry that's near and dear to me and affects me. So I'm real interested to talk to our, our guest. I have Jeff Salter. He is the CEO and founder of Caring Senior Service. Welcome to the show, Jeff. Hi, Rob. Thanks a lot for having me today. I really appreciate the chance to share more about our our brand and company and what we're doing. Uh, It's great to have you. So tell us a little bit about that. How, How did Caring come to be? Yeah, well, we're now 31 years in business, and uh, I started the company in 1991 as a a 20-year-old taking care of a home health company. I worked, as I take care of it, I worked in the office for a home health care company, and I saw that that company provided skilled care, but they didn't provide any of the services that seniors needed and families were depending on for the other hours that they were not there. Uh, the company I worked for, they would they would accept calls and people, I'd answer the phone, people would say they need a caregiver at night or someone to be with mom or dad over the weekend. And I'd have to basically tell them we didn't have that service. I had started helping people by giving them a list of names and they could hire people privately. And I found that people just, issues came up and they'd call back and say, hey, that person didn't work out. I need more people. I need more help with mom now. Do you have another name? And the idea struck me that you know, this is a service that needs to be managed and people, someone needs to be in the middle to help coordinate everything going on to help families know what's out there and to organize caregivers so that the schedules could be met and the demand could be met. And in 1991, there just wasn't an industry like this. It didn't exist at all. Today, it's a huge industry, but uh, being one of the early pioneers in, in it, uh, I got to see it from the from the ground up. And I started my first location in Odessa, Texas, and uh, quickly learned that the service was needed in other areas. I opened up a branch office in Midland, which is kind of just 30 miles away from Odessa. And then McAllen, Corpus Christi, Texas, San Antonio, Texas. And then in 2002, we started franchising the business. So we started expanding across the US from that point. Wow. Yeah, I can remember. So I go back, my my career goes back to the early 2000s for franchising, at least that part of it. And I remember there was there was quite a boom happening in uh, senior care. And uh, it was starting to become apparent that there was a tidal wave coming. And yeah. uh, and that's kind of where we're, net, we're, we're underwater, I think we're starting to be. And so tell us, tell me a little bit more about I mean, the brand, I mean, when I, when I say it, you know, caring senior service or just caring, right. I mean, that says a lot to me and what you just said about how you started the brand, it really came out of your heart, right. Caring. Absolutely. Yep. Um, so tell us a little bit about the branding aspect of that and how that sort of carries over. Yeah. We really wanted to, when we were thinking about becoming a, a more of a national company, really wanted to pay attention to what, what we were trying to say just with our, with our brand. And it was important for me we had we had had this idea of of helping seniors stay at home. To be home, you had to be healthy, and we know that everybody loves to be happy when they're when they're home. That that's that's their happy place tends to be, and we were really specific in our brand to include three words. And if you look at our logo, you'll see that we've got healthy, happy home, and that's really our mission statement. So it's it's something that we were real. Uh, specific about. We want to make sure everyone knew what our mission as an organization was, is to help yeah. healthy, keep their senior, keep their loved one healthy as can be by by being involved with them, um, keep them happy um, in the process, and 
most of all, people want to remain home. Nobody wants to leave their house to go receive services somewhere else. Nobody really wants to go to a nursing home or assisted living. They generally have to do that because they don't have any other options or don't know about other options. So we were really careful with that. And we wanted to include the heart because, you know, that's that's where we come from. And a lot of people don't recognize that we got a little bit of a of a mystery in our, our, our logo itself. The blue square that you see in our logo when you take a look at it actually represents a door, and that's us entering the home of someone. So it's uh, yeah. g- got real real purpose behind it, and that's you, the main thing with our brand is we want to make sure people understood our mission right from the start. Yeah, no, I think it's brilliant. I mean, it's important. It really it's a it's a transfer of feeling, and and that's an important distinction. What you're talking about is home, right? Because I think about my yeah. mom. My mom's 84. My dad passed away not long ago, and and that's why I I can say you know what I meant earlier when it's near and dear to me because of some of the things we had to go through, and 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 I think all of us when we get to a certain age start to it starts to become a reality, and it's it's becoming more of a reality for so many. Right. Um, and that kind of brings me to my next question. I, I know you did uh, a bit of an excursion a couple of years ago um, and uh, wanted to bring awareness uh, yeah. to yeah. to this idea of senior senior care and just, you know, folks like me, right, maybe in their 40s, 50s, have older parents. You know, we're, a lot of us are being quiet about our challenges and there's just not enough awareness that there's help out there. Anyway, tell us more about the bike ride. I want to learn yeah. more about what you did there and, and how that uh, is playing over now. Yeah, it, it turned out we we wanted to, we were celebrating, about to celebrate 30 years of business. And that's an amazing accomplishment for any any business. And we recognized that we wanted to do something. We came up with some different ideas and kind of a workshop to say, what? how do we want to celebrate 30 years? And the genesis of it, I had started riding my bike. I have an electric bike and I started riding it to work. It's about 20 miles each way. And uh, during one of these meetings, one of the guys just said a, a, a joking comment, said, Jeff, you should ride your bike and go visit every location. And I immediately said at the, at the onset, that's the silliest idea I've ever heard. No way I'm riding my bike to every location. But because I'm entrepreneurial, because I'm always pr- solving problems, I thought, what would it take to ride a bike that many miles to go visit every location. We're in 21 states. So how could I get to each location and what would it take? So I started actually working on my electric bike, learned a lot about the, the, the electronics that go into it, battery technology, things like that. And, and I came back about a month later and said, guys, I can do this. I can make the distances that I need to every day. We can plot out a course in which I can ride to every office. And with that, we thought, okay, that's that's cool, that's fun, but why? You know, just to celebrate 30 years, and we thought, yeah, that's true. And so we we really wanted to bring some purpose behind it, not just celebration, but also we, we decided to start a movement, and we call it the Close the Gap in Senior Care. And what we would do is we'd use this as our platform for really showing – everyone that the needs of seniors are great and that we have gaps in every community that exist, be it funding gaps, housing gaps, care gaps that might exist. And we really want to bring awareness. And with that awareness, also bringing attention. So I, I, during the ride, I hoped I would, I would encourage people to, to really focus on three things. First is people that might want to become caregivers, we could see that there's an opportunity in this industry for we need a lot of caregivers. There's just huge shortages. There's going to be shortages for many years to come. And so we want to bring more people into the into the field. Also wanted to kind of highlight technology. I'm doing this on an electric bike. I want people to see, hey, if this guy is able to do an electric bike ride and using technology to assist him, is there some way that I can be inspired by that and, and develop technology that can help seniors in some meaningful way? Yeah. And finally, the other thing was just to bring entrepreneurs into senior care. Um, yes, if they became a caring franchisee, that'd be fantastic. But we just need so many people involved in senior care at every level that we hope to raise that awareness and really drive it. And 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 even even with those two missions, celebrate 30 years, raise awareness, we decided to add a third thing, and we decided to start raising funds during the ride. So we're excited to say that by the end of the ride, we raised $170,000. And we're using that money now to install grab bars into seniors' homes that couldn't afford it on their own. So to date, we've done 160 installations, and we're continuing to do installs. We've got 
400 plus to still do. And we're still seeing people donate money to our cause. And so it was really a cool thing. And it really helps our franchisees at the local level because they have now a nonprofit they can be involved with. We took our movement and be- it turned it into a nonprofit. So it's yeah. something that's really, everyone can get behind and it's a positive message. And it really spoke to our mission and purpose as a company. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, it, it, like as a marketer, I, I, I listen, I think, and I see how all the dots connect. Right. Yeah. And, you know, so, uh, you know, so having that kind of a, a tool, right. As, as a local owner uh, would open many doors. Right. And the, 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 the concept of in today's marketing of getting behind social causes and companies getting behind social mm-hmm. causes, is so important to marketing. It's, it's important just for humanity, right? That's why we really do it. But yeah. it's great for marketing. It's what the younger generations will expect, right? From our from our leaders and our corporate uh, uh, businesses to really hook in and see what can I do in my world, you know? Yeah. And I, I love that installing grab bars in homes, right? Like that's a real benefit, a real helpful thing. And it, it translates, right? It's great to talk about. And yeah, um, but what an amazing story. So, so they have that. So that kind of leads me to my my next question of, you know, so when you start a franchise brand, you, it's all about local ownership and entrepreneurship and partnering. And, you know, what does your vision look like? You've been in business 30 years. Uh, what, what, what does it look like for the future? I know senior care is all about the population getting older and there's nothing but demand increase in, in what I can see. But what's your plan for the future? What does it look like, do you think? Well, I think I'm I'm a little, I don't know if it's unique necessarily, but there are very few brands in our space that have leadership that ran and operated locations before becoming a franchise company. Um, the biggest brands in our industry all got into it with the decision to start franchising right away. They opened a location as a test model, and then they became franchisors kind of immediately. And that's great. That's a lot. A lot of franchises are very successful doing that. But we take we came from a from a very different aspect. So my vision of what the future is is really rooted in truly helping seniors. I want to see that seniors can live longer, can be at home more comfortably and want to do whatever we can to make that successful and not strictly driven by a profit motive. We, of course, if we do well, if we serve our clients well, we're all going to be compensated for that. But it's all about looking for what seniors need today and tomorrow with care. So that's led us to be just very different as an organization. First and foremost, as a franchisor, our goal is not to be the biggest franchisor in the country in senior care. Our goal is to help each of our franchisees be the biggest in their market that they're in. If I have five franchisees, 50, 150, that will always be our goal is to help them be the best they can be in their local market. Because, And I'm sure we'll talk about marketing, but it just really requires uh, the the owner to be involved. But they have to have a great product to sell. They have to have something that, that is, is needed and wanted. So we've done things like develop our own software along the way because we wanted to tap into technologies that would be available today and in the future. And you can't do that when you're beholden to a software vendor and mm-hmm. they might not want to integrate that into your systems. And there's just some flaws that exist there that we recognized you know, over eight years ago. We, we knew it early on, but we just weren't to the point where we could develop our own software. And we've since done that. But, you know, the future of senior care is changing. Um, the A lot of people don't realize, but we went through two previous decades of kind of stagnant growth in senior care. It was expanding rapidly, but the growth rate itself was very steady. And what okay. we started in 2000 is we went from about the previous decade, 2 million people turned 85 plus. And that's an important distinction because 85 is kind of the age that people really start needing our types of service. And yeah. so you had a decade of, of growth that was only about 2 million people entering that, that, um, that age range. But starting in 2000, that number doubles to almost 4 million people. And then from 2030 to 2040, that's going to double again. It's, it's, it's over 8 million people will be aging. So, what yeah. a lot of Americans don't realize, and this is a, this is a, this is a, they talk about the silver tsunami, and that was really people aging 65. 
those people don't turn 85 until you know it's 20 years later. So yeah. we're going to see this huge growth that is unprecedented in society of seniors needing help. And we're really trying to look at any, any possible way we can evolve as a company to meet that demand. Yeah. I love that you have such an eye on technology too, because clearly with some of the, the advances in AI and even who knows blockchain, uh, but, yeah. but all these things, hopefully 5G makes makes ubiquitous communications easy. Um, so, you know, hopefully, and a guy with, with an eye on tech, you can keep helping. I know helping seniors at home, tech is something that could certainly play a role and is now, yeah. you know, simple things like grab bars, but then there's other other things, monitors. Yeah, and that's and something people don't realize that technology isn't always about electronics. And technology yeah. is assistive devices. It is grab bars because the number one um, leading cause of death among seniors is a fall. And over 80% of all falls happen in a bathroom. So something simple like a technology like a grab bar can help prevent those falls. But we're looking at things like um, motion sensor devices, audio sensing devices in which they can be involved. We're, we're launching a program that allows us to um, have a an audio data device in the home that recognizes patterns and sees changes in those patterns and alerts us far in advance than what the consumer might actually tell us. So you can imagine someone that is starting to develop an infection uh, in their bladder and they are now urinating more frequently and yeah. they won't notice the change in pattern themselves. They just go, I got to go to the bathroom more. But our systems will allow us to recognize that and intervene days earlier than the infection has time to take hold and we can help wow. get them the help that they need therefore avoiding a hospitalization which is disastrous for many seniors and get yeah. them the treatment they need and be able to again remain home and that's that's what's so important for us so it's just those sort of things and there's so much out there that's still to come yeah so much right exactly and and from a business standpoint you know we want to help seniors and and there's a lot of demand coming our way but from a from a, a a business standpoint, it sounds like it really will open future doors for new income streams, new ideas for helping. Uh, so that's all exciting. So so when we look at franchise growth, like you said, your goal is is to make every franchisee, you know, successful in their market. Um, there's two components. When they get started, you know, that first year, you really want to get them off to a good start. Mm -hmm. That's one way of looking at it, that launch phase, the training phase. And then, of course, ongoing is the scaling, the, the ones that get bigger and bigger. And I'm sure some of it's up to them how big they get. But in those two phases, what are some of the must-haves, uh, either from a technology or a marketing point of view, that, that you've discovered in your 30 years? Yeah, and you know, being in this career for 30 years, it's something that not a lot of people have had the chance to stay within one segment the way that I have. And I've seen a lot of things that have changed. But then I've seen a lot of things that stay the same. And in, in for us, the marketing, the way, you know, one of my biggest surprises is that 30 years into this industry, that I meet people every day that I talk to about what I do, and they say to me, wow, I didn't know that service existed. And the, as much messaging as we do, I would have thought, and then all of our competitors out there do, we would have thought this would be something that's commonplace, but today it's still not. So we learned early on that to be really good in a market, you've got to get out and make connections with people that are interacting with seniors every single day. So we focus and we train our owners how to make those connections and how to say the things that matter to those connections, what really matters. It's not dropping a brochure off. It's not taking donuts. It's really about helping understand what the issue is and how we help them. And Caring has an amazing um, way of delivering service that is different. We call it our great care method. And that focuses on first and foremost about the employees, the people that we hire, uh, about the services that we deliver, and then our active involvement that we keep going uh, on and on. So those things really help our owners connect with the referral sources and drives their business forward in those early, early months. Yeah. 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 I mean, the referral sources are, uh, I mean, so many, and, and it's becoming, as you said, there's more of them, right? Because there's sure. more services being created. There's more, even the technology companies that are going to create these services would be, you know, who knows, you know, those partnerships. And um, 
So that, that, and that is right. That is sort of the grassroots old school way of looking at marketing, right? It's not high tech. It's not talking about Google ads or Facebook ads or, or those kinds of things. But are there, are there other things that you feel are important now, uh, with, uh, with the digital side of marketing? Yeah. Yeah. I, I tend to focus. I, I tend to stay a little old school in that sense. And, yeah. but, but with that, what we recognize is that. Validation occurs, right? So validation happens somewhere else. Validation happens on the internet. They want to go to a website that's robust, has the information they need. And we spend a lot of time with social media, making sure that we're focusing on, on the positive interactions that we have, getting, getting not just the likes themselves, but the testimonials from seniors and ensuring that they're, they're doing that. But we're, we're trying to reach out more because this, this service is still not a easy service to, to mass announce or mass advertise because yeah. people don't realize that you know we make a decision to buy lunch every day we eat yeah. three times a day so we're making a eating decision all the time so it makes sense for food companies to advertise to us all the time we buy mm -hmm. a car every three to four years so it makes sense for a car company to advertise to us all the time but you make a decision to bring someone into your home for care one time in your life and so the segment, it really limits how you can do outreach to people because it's such a, it's actually a small segment of society that needs our services. Mm -hmm. Your senior population is about 10% of the whole population. Typically, it's growing to 12 and 15% in some markets. But then the yeah. people that can, can, can tap into our services or actually need it are even smaller. So mm -hmm. it really limits some of your mass advertising that you can do. Right. Radio and TV is very, it, some people try and do it, but it's very limiting. So digital though is where it's at because you can really target those people. You can target the daughters of, of seniors who, right. I mentioned daughters because uh, far and away, they're the ones that are helping make these, these care decisions. Um, yeah. So we focus on those kind of ways, really looking at who that target market is. A lot of people think it might be the senior but then the problem with the seniors, the senior 85-year-olds of today, they're starting to, but as, as this next wave comes into 85, but the 85-year-olds of this past decade have not been internet users. They're not on the internet. Mm -hmm. So it's, again, yeah. it makes it difficult to tap into them. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. It is, it, you know, it's a, it's a challenge, right? Which, you know, being part of a franchise network that's always innovating, always exploring, has, you know a large network of business owners doing and testing different approaches. Right. But right. the net net of it is, is being, you know, interacting with folks that are interacting with seniors or families that have seniors. And now that number is increasing, increasing, increasing. And, 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 and I know as a, as a marketing consultant as well, that, you know, in that space for senior care, it is about awareness. Yeah. You know, that, that bike ride you did was amazing because you can get in front of almost any audience I've found. And there's people in there that, that would raise their hand and say, you know, I need help, but you're right. How would you know which ones? <laughs> right. And you can't do that in a cost effective way unless you do some partnering and some localized, uh, uh, you know, uh, research on who, who is working with your audience. Yeah. And every, um, everyone's care journey is different. That's the thing is that we all have parents that, that experience a challenge for a momentary challenge and then they get past it. They have yeah. multiple episodes, but when do they? really need someone to be with them for hours in the day. And that's yeah. when the, the challenge is really, really, really is to step up at that, that time, be present in that moment. And, and that's why we, we focus a lot. And it's important that our branding though, people understand that we're here for a solution. We're here to, to be there when, when family can't be there, we can is what we often often use. Yes. tagline. So it's, it's important. People know that. Yes. Yes. And the whole, the whole home idea, right? Staying home, Home yep. is where the heart is. Home, you know, and that's just being real. That's what every everybody would want, you know, yeah. is to eat mom or dad or mom and dad to be at home. Yeah. Um, and that's sort of the, the the best path to start with. <laughs> and then and yeah. then you have to take yeah. it where it goes. But uh, well, that's amazing. So so again, you mentioned a few times on our conversation that you've been in business thirty years, and I think that's an amazing story. I love talking to guys like you because it's always a little different. But twenty? Did you say twenty years old? I think you said I was 20, twenty. Twenty. Yeah, yeah. Twenty years old. Yeah. So you started, and so you got thirty years under your belt. You've done. You built this company. Is there one thing? Is there? Um, you know, before we wrap things up today, I love asking. Every day when you get up, when you're leading your team, is there sort of one driving thing? I, I, I kind of think your brand is sort of that, but is there a principle or something you want to share with everybody that you just think is really important and would help them? You can always be better. 
you can always do more. You can always do better than you did yesterday. Um, I was a, a track athlete in high school, and and I I never finished my college years, but I did two years of a junior college. I was a hurdler, a long jumper, and a high jumper, and I accepted that my coaching would help me get better, and I was able yeah. to every single year get better. And that attitude that I was developed from from middle school, um, it, it's so easy when you're in a s- individual sport that is timed or measured because you right. you know how am i doing this time you know what your height was you know what your distance was you know what your time was and that attitude though always stuck with me it drives some of my team crazy because they just produce something that's fantastic and i'm saying let's make it better and uh, that's something that that i think is really drives me in everything that i do uh, again it's it's tough because it makes it makes uh, people feel like we're always changing. Uh, I yeah. believe change is great. I love change, um, but people don't always like change. So it can be a little tough for teams, uh, but I try to instill that in them and get them to understand right away. That's the way that this company works. That's the way we're going to be. That change is important that we keep striving for it. So, you know, but we can always be better. I love it. I love it. I immediately thought of my son who is a track athlete. And he started in high school and he's in college now and and we're hoping he'll get a good four years in. He he was injured last year. But one of the things about that sport and about him getting tied to it, it it changed his life. Yeah. He he's a he's a he's a I I can't believe he's a great, he's a great student, (laughs) you know. Yeah. Um, because he never was very interested in grade school and middle school, but but it kept him on track. And there's that concept in running of always looking at your personal record, right? Your PR. And knowing where you stand. And it's really about a personal journey a lot of the time. And it is about a team thing too. But what an amazing set of skills he's learned. I always tell him, I said, just that, that there will take you so far in everything yeah. you do. <laughs> so no, it's it's always getting better, right? Yeah. Um, well, that's that's great to hear. Hey, listen, is there a website or uh, something you want to share with the audience that, that they could check uh, Caring Out and the opportunity? To, to- yeah, yeah. Easy on the opportunity is caringfranchise.com. So people can learn more about what we're doing as a brand and where we're going as a franchise system. If people are looking at services and need that, caringseniorservice.com, easy way to contact us and get a hold of us for either opportunity. Oh, that's, that's great. Well, Jeff, I really appreciate your time today. Thanks for being on the show. Yeah, Rob, thanks.